Welcome to video four of this series. We're going to take a look here at uh, how to create UVs with an automatic mapping method, which will be the third method we're looking at. To do this, I'm going to select one of my arms. And actually, let me just go ahead and uh, turn off my already UV'd stuff. And I, uh, I could isolate select this, but it's getting so simple here now. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to take this arm and uh, I'm going to go to create UVs and just choose automatic mapping. Now the beauty of an automatic map is that it just creates really simple very nice stuff here um, separates out all of the faces and I think does a pretty good job at this. For really simple objects like a cube which only has six faces automatic maps tend to work perfectly. But watch what happens if I try and create an automatic map for something like a sphere. Create UVs, automatic map, all of a sudden what it creates is kind of disjointed, somewhat useless, and the more complex an object is, the less useful automatic mapping really becomes. But for something simple like this, an automatic map can actually be a really nice way of putting this all together. To organize my closet, I'm first going to take everything out of the closet, turn on the texture, and then I'm going to figure out ways to put this back together. Now looking at how this should be arranged, I know my little claw needs to face inwards towards the body. So there's the claw. Here's the claw's face. My claw should be oriented pointing to the right, meaning that the top edge, this edge, needs to be connected to another face. To figure out what's connecting to what here, I'm just going to select that edge and choose Move and Sew, which we've looked at previously. And take a look at that. If I select some UVs and go to select shell and rotate this into place, you can see what I'm starting to create here. This arrangement is now representing these two faces right here. I'm going to go to the edge component mode and I can see that there's one face that needs to be sewn to the right, so I'm going to select its bounding edge and choose move and sew. There's one that needs to be sewn in the other direction, one that needs to be sewn on top of this, and one that needs to be sewn to the right of that. All of a sudden, my UV arrangement looks pretty much exactly like my stack. I'm going to take this, position it on, spend a few minutes here doing my align, which we looked at in the previous video, by selecting a series of UVs, uh, UVs and hitting uh, align to the maximum or minimum UV values. This will just straighten out my UVs so I know I don't have any distortion here. And then I will place my UVs on. So once I have these on, you can see my hand is working correctly, my little claw is facing inwards. And I now want to transfer these UVs, since I've got really good UVs here on one arm, and since the other arm is just really a duplicate of the first arm, it should be no problem for me to just transfer my UVs from one arm to the other. That will end up stacking both of my arms right on top of each other. Forgot to align that top part. So what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to select my source, the one with the good UVs, then I'm going to hold down shift and select my target, the one that currently doesn't have any UVs. I am then going to go to the mesh menu up top and I'm going to choose transfer attributes and go to the options box. There's a lot of options here, let me just reset my settings. Pretty much all of this you can leave as is. If you're just learning this tool, I would recommend just going to edit reset settings and resetting everything out, making sure it's default. The only thing you need to change is the sample space. To transfer the UVs from one object to the other, if the objects have the same vertices, you can use component space. That means that a vertex at this corner on the tip of a finger should match up vertex number wise with the vertex at the same corner on the other hand. If for some reason you have 
renumbered the vertices through either accident or on purpose, but the overall grid flow is exactly the same, you can use the topology sample space transfer method. However, in this case, my UVs have both the same number and the same position, so I'm going to use the more reliable component. So I select my source, then my target, which I've already done. I choose these options in transfer attributes. Pretty much the only thing I'm changing is sample space to component, and I hit transfer. You'll notice that my shells will become darker blue because I now have two blues on top of each other, and my arm is set. As I've added history to this, uh, through the whole mapping process. Now would be a great time to delete my history. I have a history icon on my shelf, but you can also go to edit, delete all by type history to remove history from your scene. Now, I can turn back on my already UV'd parts here. Maybe it's a good, now's a good time to delete my layer. The only thing I have left to do is my feet, and you can choose any one of the methods that we've looked at so far to UV your feet. Uh, you could planar map it and then cut it apart. You could planar map the individual faces or you could try an automatic map and sew it back together. But when you're done with that, your final arrangement should look something like this, where we have all of our parts mapped out and loaded onto the zero to one space, packed nicely, packed neatly, and representing the texture that it needs to. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos, uh, please check out kleinmanklearngood.com, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash slorpthegillman, or my personal website, andrewkline.net. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed these four videos.